What's going on internet? IG here again today. Today we're going to be talking about KDE. Now the K desktop environment or KDE, Plasma desktop, all of that whole slew of applications and libraries that are all built together to coexist very well is going to be the subject for the next two videos that I make. I'm going to be making a two part series about the best KDE distributions. That is the best distributions that take time to package up the K desktop environment and most of the applications and libraries that go along with that into a very cohesive distribution. We've seen some great releases from Fedora, from OpenSUSE, from Magia, and all of these distributions are major players. They provide a lot of different desktop environments, and then there's some that specialize in the KDE side of things. So today I'm gonna to be starting out by looking at three of such distributions, and then we're gonna conclude by looking at the next three next time. So as per the last video's recommendations, I asked you guys what were the, some of the best KDE distributions out there, and you guys gave me some great responses, all of which I I've looked into, researched, and installed in virtual machines on native hardware and really mucked around with them to see which ones I like the best. So here's the first three that I'm going to be talking about today. Solid K, the Linux Mint KDE, and Neptune. So first up, Solid K. Solid K comes from a Debian-based distribution. Actually, it has its roots in the Linux Mint Debian edition. Basically, what happened was a lot of people in the Linux Mint community loved the Linux Mint Debian edition, but they also liked the KDE release that Linux Mint put out. So they kind of decided to meld the two, and one particular community member decided to sort of bring a tutorial as to how to install KDE on the Linux Mint Debian edition before forking the project altogether and creating his own distribution based off Linux Mint Debian edition with KDE bolted on top. So what does Solid K bring to the fore? Well, as I said, it's Debian based, which means it's going to be pretty stable. And in my experience, this was definitely true. It's also relatively recent with KDE with the Plasma Desktop 4.10.5 available on the install. Now again, Debian is a rolling release, so that means you're going to get updates as they come out and as they are stabilized and tested by the Linux Mint team, interestingly enough. Now then, at the same time, it does have relatively bland theming, and this could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your taste in desktop environment goodness. But it does have a relatively consistent look and feel across all of the different libraries of widgets out there. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that applications that weren't necessarily made to work in KDE still look very nice. They still look like they should belong in KDE. Also, setting up hardware was relatively easy. They had some nice, simple printer utility setups, as well as a few custom tools of their own to help you manage things like drivers and updates and things of that nature. And then they use quite a few Mint tools as well, seeing as it is based off Linux Mint Debian Edition. So with the presence of all of these Mint tools, as well as some of their own custom stuff, it does make it a pretty easy distribution for new users to get used to. However, it will require a little bit of prior Linux knowledge in order to get this one going to its full potential. Now, performance-wise, Solid K is not too bad. 550 meg on idle, at least that was my experience with the 64-bit edition, so it's nothing really to complain about. As far as installing software goes, you do have the Linux Mint Software Install Manager, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you are used to and what you like. Solid K also has a pretty nice uh, software selection. They do cover a pretty good range, but some of the application categories I felt uh, were left wanting a little bit. Now, granted, of course, installing software is relatively easy, so it's not really that big of a deal, but as far as a uh, as far as a packaged operating system, I like to see good taste in the choice of apps that are used in the default packaging of the distribution. And so from there we move on to the sort of the parent, at least the one of the parents of this distribution, and that was Linux Mint 15 KDE edition. Now, every release that Linux Mint puts out, they put out different desktop environments like XFC, KDE, Cinnamon and Mate, or Mate. So Linux Mint 15 KDE is of course based on the Ubuntu 13.04 release. So they use the same repositories and the same default desktop environments that you're gonna get on that release. And in saying that, that means you're gonna get KDE Plasma Desktop 4.10.4. Again, most of these KDE releases are all around the KDE 4.10, so that's all you really need to know. Now, once again, Linux Mint 15 does have all those fantastic Mint tools that Linux Mint has become famous for, and they do integrate those very well into KDE. They do have some very nice wallpapers available, and they've got a fairly bare bones selection of applications available out of the box. None of the apps are really exclusively KDE. They basically use whatever is best in the open source world, which is pretty good work. Now, performance wise, Linux Mint KDE 15 clocked in at around 450 megs on idle, which is, yeah, about 100 meg less than what, uh, than what the other other distributions in today's video have been. 
2018. So I would almost say that it's the best performing out of the three of them and it was kind of that way in everyday use as well. Applications seem to load a bit quicker and I don't know whether to put that down to Ubuntu or just a slightly older revision of KDE Plasma Desktop. But either way, it was a little, Linux Mint KDE was a little bit snappier. Again, Mint specializes in fantastic driver management as well as some other great tools for upgrading your packages, installing software and all that fun stuff. So it's very, very newbie friendly. Out of the three distributions I'm talking about today, it is probably the most newbie friendly. And also you do get a very comprehensive set of widgets. Uh, that's the fun stuff you can put all over the desktop uh, on Linux Mint 15 as well. So overall, it's a pretty sweet deal. Moving right along to Neptune 3.2. Now, Neptune is again a Debian based distribution, means it's rolling, it's going to update itself over time. And out of the three distros that I'm talking about today, this one has the best out of the box look and feel. Very consistent, very futuristic theming, very colorful. I really like it to be honest. The performance takes a bit of a hit though. I noticed that it was a tad bit sluggy, sluggier, if that's a word, than Linux Mint and the Solid K distribution. And it also was using about 550 meg of RAM at idle. KDE 4.10.3 is what you're gonna find available installed by default. And there's a pretty good selection of apps here, especially on the multimedia side of things. They package in some great professional level software for multimedia enthusiasts. And for me, that appeals to me because I do this sort of thing. Also, the tools that they use to install all applications is slightly more native and works better with KDE. They use APA, the front end for installing software using Debian's obviously apt-get. And they also bundle in some nice documentation for first time users and some nice driver utilities to help you install tricky hardware drivers for printers or graphics drivers, etc. It's not quite as comprehensive or practical as some of the solutions that SolidK and Linux Mint provide, but it's certainly nothing that you wouldn't be able to figure out. So at the end of the day, which one of these do I recommend? Well, considering I'm looking at three of the six that I'm gonna be looking at, I'm gonna give you sort of half an answer. As of out of these three, I would probably go with Linux Mint 15 KDE if you are new to Linux, because it's gonna give you the easiest introduction to how Linux works. It's gonna give you some great tools, and at the end of the day, it operates very similarly to what Windows does back in the day. Both Solid K and Neptune are great operating systems because they have got that Debian base. They're nice and strong distributions. They have solid packages available for them. And Neptune does look amazing. It is gonna take a little bit more technical know-how to get everything up and running the way you like it. But I think once you do, the results and the rewards are pretty cool. So I think my preference would edge towards Neptune, but a very solid nod to the Solid XK team as well. KDE has become a fantastic desktop operating system. It's become immensely more powerful than almost any other operating system I can imagine. That includes Windows, OS X, and all of the other desktop environments that are available. You can do so much with it. And it's become really speedy in the last couple of releases too, which really makes it appealing to all of us who used to avoid it because of the fact it was kind of sluggish and uh, chunky on older hardware. But with how lean and mean the Qt development library or Qt development library has become because they're trying to focus on mobile devices, it also means that the desktop environments of KDE or the KDE Plasma desktop get faster as well. And that can only mean good stuff for the rest of us. So definitely check back next week for part two and let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear all of your opinions on these different operating systems as you all had some great feedback on my last video. Again, keep the suggestions coming and also let me know if you wanna see this sort of themed video uh, as opposed to a single desktop distribution review as this one sort of gives a bit more of an overview or maybe a bit more of a comparative review rather than just taking one product and looking at it. So thank you all for watching as always and like the video if you did indeed like the video and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis and I shall see you all next week with part two, so stick around.